Young Chug recently became a software engineer. He's working as hard as he can at his job because he wants to get a promotion. His salary is alright, but he knows he could get a lot more. He just doesn't know how to get it. Right now, he can afford rent and save a bit at the end of each month. But then comes the last contender. The last contender knows his work. He's making double of what Young Chuck is making. Not because he works a lot harder than Young Chuck, but it's because he is a lot more strategic. He understands that it's not about the hours of work, but about doing smart work. Hey, my name is Zorbek. I'm a senior software engineer at an AI startup in New York City. And in this video, I'll talk about how you can get paid more as a software engineer. There is something that you guys need to understand is that right now, there are programmers who are dumber than you, less experienced than you. They don't have anything that you don't have. And yet they're getting paid over $100,000 a year, 120, dollars $150,000, $200,000 a year. And that's because programming isn't just about being the smartest coder. There is more to the story. So in this video, I'm going to give you three strategies that you can utilize to maximize how much money you can make as a software engineer. First, you need to target the right companies. And by that, I mean that you don't just target any companies or you don't just go after every company that everyone else is going. There is a smart approach to this. The best companies are actually the startups who recently raised a lot of money. And many people don't think about that. The reason why those companies are the best to target is because if there is a lot of money, usually it's a sign of high growth. It's a sign that the business is doing well. And you always want to be on board of a ship that is doing well. Next is since they just raised a lot of money, it means that they have money. They have money to spend and they are ready to spend it on growth, which is very, very important. A startup who's raised a lot of money, they want to spend it on growth. And usually what that means is hiring more people, more engineers. They want to move fast. And that's extremely important because this means that they're not going to just like randomly ghost you and then come back for after a month or do like interview process that lasts for multiple months. They're going to be moving very fast and interviews are going to be accelerated. Usually that's what it means. It's also less competitive than big tech because less people apply there compared to big tech. It doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean that it's not competitive, but it's less competitive. And the interview process is just simpler. Usually it's faster. That's why these companies are extremely interesting to target. And that's what I recommend. There's a lot of different resources that you can use. You can use Crunchbase, for example, to identify companies who raised. I think the best is actually companies who raised the Series B because those companies, they have like product market fit. They have a model that works. They're usually bigger in size and you're going to learn a lot there. It's less risky compared to an early stage startup who just raised. I think a series B startup is like a sweet spot to go there. And then you're going to get equity and equity can be worth a lot of money if they go get acquired or, or get IPO. Next, you need to pick a strategic location. And this is very important because you need to realize something. The same company can pay you $50,000 to $100,000 more depending on where you get hired. Like if you get hired somewhere in Asia or somewhere in Europe or somewhere in America, your salary is going to be completely different. Same company, a similar job, but just different location. And yes, that's enough to, to shed the little tear. This is a list of cities that pay high salaries. So you have like the top US cities, usually it's the big cities, either in the US, in the UK, Zur like Zurich is for Switzerland, Dubai, Singapore, and more. It's not an exhaustive list. You can find it, just Google list of cities that pay the software engineers the highest and you're going to be able to find it. If you have an alternative to move to one of those cities and you're down for it and it, it works for you for your life, you want to get that experience, then I recommend start planning for that. Start seeing like, how can I move to one of those cities and find a job there to just maximize my salary and also meet just smart people who are there. That's one approach, but there is another one that I think for most of you guys are going to be, is going to be very interesting is remote. The pandemic changed a lot of things in the tech market and a lot of people went remote. A lot of people, even that I know who are here in New York with me, even like at my company where I work, a lot of people, they stay in a big city that pay high salary, but they work remotely or they live here and they work remotely for a company that is even in a different city. It doesn't really make sense. People, yeah, I guess they just like living in, in the city, but from a like, financial perspective, it doesn't always make sense. But the point of all this is that remote in tech is becoming more and more popular. And a lot of companies are completely fine with you working remotely. So the goal here is that you want to find the companies that pay the same no matter where you are in the world. And there are a few companies like this. Again, you can Google it to find like a more exhaustive list and keep searching. But this is a list of a couple of companies that I know personally, they pay the same for engineers no matter where they are in the world. There's Gumroad, there's Sourcegraph, Basecamp, Cal.com. It's all startups. So this, I would consider you check out and see if you can get hired at one of those companies, because then you're going to pay, be paid the US salary, but you might be somewhere in Europe or somewhere in Asia or in Africa. So that can be extremely interesting for you. You're going to get the benefit of living at home with your family, low cost, 
based on the local market, but then the salary based on like US market. That's what I recommend to most people. Next, you want to do something that most people don't do is you push for a race. Most people, they just wait for a race to come to them, but you don't want to be like that. You want to be proactive because <laughs> that race might never come or it might never come the way you want it to be. The thing that you need to realize as well, like this is another thing that is going to blow your mind is there are engineers right now who are sitting next to you doing the same job as you. Same thing, same job, same location, doing the same thing as you, but who might be earning $5,000 more than you, $10,000, $20,000 more than you, or more. And how do they do it? Well, this means that probably they negotiated their salary better than you when they took the contract, or they are pushing for more promotion. Could also be both of them. Maybe they negotiated better than you and they're pushing for more promotion. So literally the salary keep rising more and more and yours keep just stagnating at, at the minimum or not at an optimized value. And you cannot blame them. Like this is what you should be doing. You should be doing those things and you should be like, the thing is this shows you more the potential of what you could reach. That's how you should think about it. Instead of thinking about, oh, like why do those people get more? You should think about how can I get to that level as well. To do it, you need to be smart and strategic. You cannot just go and ask for promotion randomly. You can do it, of course, but you're not gonna, it's not the most strategic move on the chessboard. You need to be smart, you need to build up a case. You need to essentially make it very hard for them to say no, that's what you want. You wanna make it hard for them to say no to you. If you just come randomly and ask for promotion, it's very easy to say no. It's easy. Like they can come up with some kind of just crappy excuse like, oh, like the economy is going bad right now. Like we're struggling or something like that. But if you build up a case, if you have just an undeniable track record of success, it's very hard for them to say no. So you're going to first start by showing the value that you bring to the company. And this is very important. If you don't bring any value at all, if you're not an important employee for the company. So first of all, you need to question yourself and then think like, why would they even keep me in the first place? Or why, why would they even want to pay me more? If I'm not bringing any value. So you get it paid proportionally to the value that you bring. So you need to showcase the value. And you do it by listing the accomplishments that you did since the last promotion you had or since the time you joined the company. You list out all the accomplishments that you had, all the initiatives that you took. So if you helped some other colleagues, for example, if you helped onboard someone, if you pushed the team or the company to start work on a certain direction that helped, that's initiatives that are important that bring value to the company. You can also talk about the growth of the company. So if you joined, like, for example, a year ago and you see that in the span of a year, the company grew by, like, the revenue grew by 20%, you can mention this. You can be like okay if the revenue of the company is growing how come i who helped generate the revenue how come i'm not getting a piece of that why is my salary still the same as it was before the other thing that you should mention is the economy because as we know inflation every year it fluctuates but you need to match like basically if you joined the company a year ago you check the what was the inflation rate for this past year and then you make a case that if you stay at the same salary as you were a year ago when you joined it actually means that your salary decreased because with inflation that money is worth less now so it's as if your salary decreased by like five percent or eight percent or like whatever the inflation rate is so that's also an argument i wouldn't like start with that like because this is like a weaker argument compared to the accomplishments and the value bring so always start the value bring and then mix it up like that Depending on what they say, you can also add that as well as an argument. But basically, you're going to have a list of things and then it becomes hard for them to say no. But let's say you go to your manager, you talk to, to them and then you build up your whole case. You think you deserve a raise and then they say no. For whatever reason, they'll try to be nice to you, but they're going to say no ultimately. There is a last strategy that you can try. But I warn you, it's the most powerful one of them all, but it's the one that's going to take you the most time. And that's the one where you need to apply to other companies interview there and get offers. If you get offers, this is the highest leverage you can ever have whenever you're in a negotiation uh, position. What you do is at this stage, you take those offers that you received, you go back to your manager and you say, listen, I really enjoy the company. I love working here, but I got an offer from this other company. They're paying me this much. Is there something we can do? I would love to stay here, but I would like at least to, to have that amount. And ideally, the offer you got is a salary that is higher than what you're currently getting because then you, you can use that as leverage. If the company says yes, perfect. You stay there and then you continue your growth and you get paid at the salary that you want. If not, or if you realize that the offer that you got is actually better, it's a better company, better pay, everything is better, is better for your career, then just go take that one. You always need to think about two things. Any given place where you work, either you learn a lot or you earn a lot or a combination of both. So if you're very happy with your position right now because you're learning a lot of things and you're getting paid well, then that's perfect. Stay there and you should stay there as long as you can and as long as it makes sense for you. If you get paid very well but you don't learn as much, then maybe you can use that salary to, I don't know, like work on personal projects on the side. 
and then you're going to learn through that. If you're learning a lot but not getting paid a lot, then it's kind of tricky. You can do that for some years at the beginning of your career maybe, but then at some stage it's going to be a problem. And then at that stage, just move to another company or start a business. But if you're not getting either, if you are at a position where you're not getting paid enough, where you're not going to get paid what you deserve or what you know you could get based on the market, and you're not learning enough, then you should just leave. It doesn't make any sense to stay at that position. If you get a better offer, just move there. And this is how you're going to maximize the salary that you could be getting as a software engineer. I go way deeper into all those things in my personal bootcamp, the Codebender AI bootcamp. So we talk about all of this. We have like calls every week where I'm answering all the questions that you guys have. We talk about how to maximize salaries, how to stand out in the, in the market with the AI revolution coming. I'm going to teach you how to build unique, like a unique portfolio of AI projects to stand out in the market and a couple of different things on top of it. The bootcamp is in pre-order right now. So this means that if you get it now, you're going to get a big discount. Later, the prices are going to double. So if you want it, get it now. Go to lastcodebender.com slash bootcamp and sign up. Remember one thing, we are the Codebender Nation. And for us, code is a tool to help us reach our goals, to reach freedom, to have an impact in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video and I recommend you watch this one next.